Welcome back everyone, hope you're doing well. So three weeks ago I started my first ever saltwater aquarium. Setting up a reef tank had always seemed a bit scary, but lately I've been doing more research and I think I'm ready to give it a try. So I decided to start with a macroalgae aquarium. It seems to have a few similarities with freshwater planted tanks, so I think this is a good place to get started for me. So three weeks ago I made the hardscape, added the sand, filled it up with water and that's it. But today is an exciting day because we're going to add in the first macroalgae. Before we take a look at the macro algae, let's first kind of go over what has happened with this aquarium in the past three weeks. It's not really much. Basically every single day I've been adding this Aqua Forest Bio S. So these are nitrifying bacteria. So I've been adding them every single day. And also every day I've been adding just a little bit of fish food, just to kind of build up some ammonia, build up some waste, and hopefully that's going to feed the beneficial bacteria. Um, besides that, not much really. I haven't done any water changes. I just did a small top up a few days ago. There was a little bit of evaporation, so I've just added a little bit of RO back into the system. I did a water test a few days ago for um, ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. And there was a little bit of ammonia visible, there was no nitrite visible and there was a little bit of uh, nitrate visible. So I think the tank is cycled, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll just keep adding the, uh, the beneficial bacteria every single day. Yeah, that's it. So let's go take a look at our macroalgae. So it's actually quite a funny story how I got this macroalgae. I didn't buy it in a store or anything. I basically got it from one of my subscribers. So when I released the previous video about this aquarium, uh, this guy reached out to me via Instagram and he said, hey, I just watched your video and I'm in the Netherlands as well. And I have a bunch of different macroalgae. So if you want some, I can send you some. So really great guy. I'll leave his Instagram on the screen here. Give him a, give him a follow. And if you're in the Netherlands and you also want to buy some macroalgae, then yeah, send him a message. So he basically sent me seven different types. So let's take a closer look. So I'm not really familiar with the names just yet. I know a few, but I'll put the names on the screen as I'm showing them. First up, I think this one is probably my favorite actually. I don't know if you guys can see it like that. This one is called Caulerpa taxifolia. So it's green, green algae. And it kind of looks like, uh, like a feather. It has all these side, yeah, side ruffles. Looks really interesting. This one kind of creeps and sends out runners. So really cool, really, really excited about this one. Then the next one, in the bag, we also have a type of Caulerpa. I think this is the Caulerpa prolifera. And this one's a little bit bigger, also a big portion. So I'm guessing that this is an, sort of an easier type. This one probably very easy to grow, maybe very fast growing as well. So very curious about this one. And then we have one more type of Caulerpa. This is actually called grape Caulerpa. This might be a little bit difficult to see, but on each sort of stem are like these really, really tiny yeah, grapes. So really interesting algae. Small portion, let's see if this uh, will grow well. So those were the green ones, and then we have five more, and they are all basically red brownish. So this one looks really, really, really red. Not sure about the name of this one. I'm not entirely sure. I'll do my research and then I'll put the names on the screen. Another red one. Yeah, they all have kind of like different, yeah, just different growth patterns, I guess. It seems like they're all sort of attached or glued to a small pebble. I think uh, Jordi did that for me, so thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Here we have another big portion of some brown algae. It's a bit hard to see in these, uh, in these jars, so we'll get them out soon. And then this is the last one. This one is a little bit more stringy. Really nice. Okay, let's open them up and then we can uh, start adding them to the aquarium. So I think this one actually has sort of like roots as well. So we should be able to actually plant it in the sand. So we've got a nice bunch. So let's see if we can plant it. Okay, here we go. First algae going in. Let's add this one all the way to the back. Okay. Here we go. I love how it looks already. Let's do a red one now. We really like the look of this one. It looks really nice. This one is already attached to a small rock. So we can just place this somewhere on top of the hardscape, I think. I think I'll add it on top of the rock on the right side. There was definitely a bug in there. I saw something crawling away. Okay, let's do my favorite one next. The Caulerpa taxifolia. I'm probably pronouncing these things completely wrong. 
So we basically have two portions so we can spread it out somewhere. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. So this portion actually has a little bit of sand still attached to the roots. I don't know if you can call it, can call it roots, but I guess this means you can kind of plant it in the substrate. So let's see. Let's do one in each corner. So this one over here. And then we'll do this one in front of the other, the big green one. This next one is really interesting. Basically like really long strings. <laughs> Never seen anything like this before. So next up we have the grape color. This one feels very delicate. I think this one a bit more sensitive types of algae. Maybe that's a little bit harder to grow as well. So let's just hope that this one uh, will start growing. I'm thinking what's the best place to put it, but maybe it's nice to just mix it up with the other two. This one's really cool as well. Also very vibrant red. I'm thinking I'm going to put this one in the background as well. And then the last one, this one is very brown. We like how this one looks as well. It's already attached to a small rock, so very easy to place somewhere. Maybe somewhere in the, in the foreground, <laughs> the foreground is still very empty, so maybe over there. Here we go, first macroalgae is in, really happy with that. I think it is good already. Of course, everything still needs to grow a little bit more, but um, yeah, the real challenge begins now. Let's see if we can actually keep this macroalgae alive and have it start growing. That's the real challenge, of course. So I'm actually thinking, I mean, I've done quite a lot of research on macroalgae and it seems like they actually really um, enjoy nitrates and phosphates. So we can definitely start dosing some nutrients in here. And I think I'm just going to keep it very simple and use my plant fertilizer in here. So here I have Masterline, this is uh, NPK, so nitrate, phosphate and potassium. And I think I can just use that in this tank as well. I'm also thinking of dosing the, uh, the micronutrients, so like iron, zinc, calcium, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just going to give it a go and kind of keep my fingers crossed and hope that it will work. Um, I've seen in the, in the US where macroalgae tanks are a lot more popular, they already have um, like, yeah, basically fertilizer specifically designed for macroalgae, but in the Netherlands we don't have that yet. So I think I'm just gonna give it a go with my regular plant fertilizers. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of both. Just like one pump of each. And do that every day and just, just monitor. I'll do, a, I'll do it again tomorrow and then do a water test, see what, uh, what the values are like and yeah, just uh, experiment a little bit. So I saved the water that the macroalgae came in. So I thought, let me just do a quick water test, see what the nitrate and phosphate levels are. So this is the water from the macroalgae and this is my tank water. As you can see, quite a clear difference. So nitrate was pretty high, it was quite red. Phosphates were just normal level. Uh, my phosphate, phos phosphates were a little bit higher and my nitrates were almost zero. So I'm thinking maybe with this fertilizer, because it has everything in one, like N, P and K, maybe I will just switch to a fertilizer that has only nitrogen. So I can add just a, just a little bit more nitrates, you know. So it's currently Friday and I'm planning to release this video on Wednesday. So we still have about five days to go. So I'm just going to keep observing the tank, keep observing the algae, see if there's any new growth, see if there's any issues and then do any updates after this clip basically. Okay, it's now Tuesday, so that means it's been four days since I've added macroalgae and I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that I'm definitely seeing new growth, especially on the Caulerpa taxifolia. Seems some really small new leaves, also some sort of like roots that are growing, so really happy about that. The bad news is that I'm also seeing some sort of like a red slime coat on some of the algae. I'm not sure what it is, it could be red cyanobacteria. Apparently red cyano is also kind of part of the startup cycle of a new saltwater gram, so it could be that, but it's not really spreading. So yeah, just not 100% sure. I'm hoping that some of the people that are watching can give me a, a definitive, definitive answer to that question. Yeah, so especially on this portion, so those two small ones over there, and over here there's definitely some new growth happening, so really happy about that. And then over here on this side, I think this is all new growth as well. It's really vibrant green, so kind of must be. But yeah, if you look closely, um, basically on the top portions here, you can also see some of that red slime coat that I'm talking about, especially on this leaf as well. And actually, oh, also really on this algae over here. Like you really see like a, yeah, like a slimy coat basically. I don't know how else to describe it. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. Hope uh, some of you can give me an answer on that. I've also made a new fertilizer. On Friday, I basically remembered that I still had some dry salts from my uh, fertilizer experiment. So here we have potassium nitrate in a, in a powder. So I made a little stock solution with that. So now we basically have a nitrate fertilizer. So I've added a little bit of this to the aquarium on Friday and I just did a water test. And right now it's showing orange. So it's not yellow anymore, it's orange. So that means that we have a decent nitrate level in the aquarium. So that's good. Hopefully that's gonna to lead to some good growth. So I guess for now this is it. I'm going to finish editing this video so it's ready for tomorrow. And then after that we'll just have to see how this aquarium is going to develop. Hopefully everything goes well and then maybe in a few weeks we can start adding in the first inhabitants. Maybe some small shrimp, maybe some small fish. I'm, I have no idea yet but yeah, fingers crossed everything's going to go well. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.